Government incentives for plug-in hybrid electric vehicles have been established by several national governments and local authorities around the world as to support the adoption of plug-in electric vehicle. These policy-driven incentives mainly include purchase rebates, tax exemptions and tax credits, and additional perks that range from access to bus lanes to waivers on fees charging, parking, tolls, etc. The amount of the financial incentives usually depends on battery size and the vehicle all-electric range, and some countries extend the benefits to fuel cell vehicles, and electric vehicle conversions of hybrid electric vehicles and conventional internal combustion engine vehicles. Sales of the first mass-production plug-in cars by major carmakers began in late December 2010, with the introduction of the all-electric Nissan LEAF and the plug-in hybrid Chevrolet Volt. Cumulative global sales of highway legal plug-in electric passenger cars and light utility vehicles achieved the 1 million unit milestone in September 2015, and reached 4 million in September 2018, representing just about one out of every 300 vehicles on the world's roads. Asia Topic: China The Chinese government adopted a plan in 2009 with the goal of turning the country into one of the leaders of all electric and hybrid vehicles by 2012. The government's intention was to create a world-leading industry that would produce jobs and exports, and to reduce urban pollution and its oil dependence. However, a study found that even though local air pollution would be reduced by replacing a gasoline car with a similar size electric car, it would reduce greenhouse gas emissions by only 19%. As China uses coal for 75% of its electricity production, the Chinese government uses the term new energy vehicles NEVs to designate plug in electric vehicles, and only pure electric vehicles and plug in hybrid electric vehicles are subject to purchase incentives. On June 1, 2010, the Chinese government announced a trial program to provide incentives up to 60,000 yuan in June 2011 for private purchase of new battery electric vehicles and 50,000 yuan in June 2011 for plug-in hybrids in five cities. The cities participating in the pilot program are Shanghai, Shenzhen, Hangzhou, Hefei and Changchun. The subsidies are paid directly to automakers rather than consumers, but the government expects that vehicle prices will be reduced accordingly. The amount of the subsidy will be reduced once 50,000 units are sold. In addition to the subsidy, the Chinese government is planning to introduce, beginning on January 1, 2012, an exemption from annual taxes for pure electric, fuel cell, and plug-in hybrid vehicles. Hybrid vehicles will be eligible for a 50% reduction only. In 2011, only 8,159 electric cars were sold in China despite a 120,000 yuan subsidy. Unsubsidized lead acid EVs are produced without government approval at a rate of more than 30,000 per year in Shandong and requires no driving license because the top speed is less than 50 km per hour. They cost 31,600 yuan and have been the target of criticism from major car manufacturers. A mid September joint announcement in 2013 by the National Development and Reform Commission and Finance, Science, and Industry Ministries confirmed that the central government will provide a maximum of $9,800 toward the purchase of an all electric passenger vehicle and up to $81,600 for an electric bus. The subsidies are part of the government's efforts to address China's problematic air pollution. As a result of the government support and new incentives issued in 2014, production of new energy vehicles between January and August reached 31,137 units, up 328% from the same period of 2013. Domestic production during the first eight months of 2014 includes 6,621 plug-in hybrid sedans and 16,276 all-electric cars. Additionally, to further electric vehicle production, China passed measures to greatly increase the number of electric vehicles on the road. Original policy declared that companies with vehicle sales of over 30,000 vehicles must comply with new rules around NEVs. 
Each company was required to fulfill a number of NEV credits, as much as 8% by the year 2018. This target was later pushed to 2019, with a requirement of 12% by 2020. These credits are granted by the fuel efficiency and weight of the vehicles, so more fuel-efficient vehicles count for more credits. Originally, these credits were granted according to the vehicle's range, however the final policy provided a more continuous way of determine credits. The breakdown of credits in the original proposal are given below. In the final policy, credits were instead given by the formula, 0.012 times electric range plus 0.8 times adjustment factor. These credits were capped at 6. Additionally, these credits can be bought and sold. In February 2018, to further promote energy-efficient electric vehicles, China raised subsidies for electric vehicles meeting additional range requirements. Electric vehicle incentives for cars with at least 400 km of range increased from 44,000 yuan to 50,000 yuan, while vehicles with less than 150 km of range have been removed from the list of vehicles qualifying for an incentive. Changes were also made to the incentive structure for electric buses and trucks. Buses are now required to have a range of at least 150 km and have energy consumption of less than 0.7 Wh per km kg. Topic India In November 2010, the Government of India, GOI, through the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy, MNRE, announced a subsidy of 950 million rupees for electric vehicles. The subsidy provided benefits up to 20% on the X factory price, with a maximum benefit of 100,000 rupees on electric cars, 4,000 rupees on two wheelers, 5,000 rupees on high speed two wheelers, 400,000 rupees for electric minibuses, and 60,000 rupees for three wheelers. To claim the subsidy, manufacturers needed to certify that 30% of the components were made in India. The scheme ended on 31 March 2012. In April 2014, the Indian government announced a new plan to provide subsidies for hybrid and electric vehicles. The plan will have subsidies up to 150,000 rupees for cars and 30,000 rupees on two wheelers. India aims to have 7 million electric vehicles on the road by 2020. There is no subsidy or incentive for hybrids and imported vehicles, which acts as a deterrent to new entrants. To meet the stated GOI objectives under the Paris Accord, the GOI has set deadline for only electric vehicle manufacturing by 2030. Although highly ambitious as it may seem, there is growing recognition among policy makers to incentivize electric vehicle manufacturing under the Make in India policy, and a new framework policy for this was to be released by year-end, 2017. Moreover, infrastructure for electric vehicle charging is also being considered, provided either through existing energy retailers like fuel pumps or by subsidizing manufacturers' investments in the field. Tesla Motors has been offered tax incentives and potential financial backing via Special Purpose Vehicles SPVs, to establish a domestic manufacturing unit in India. Although, there are local sourcing norms of 30%, electric vehicle entrants have been exempted. Yet much will depends on government's plan to subsidize the vehicle, due their high upfront cost, that will determine any potential shift in the market. According to an OECD report, India is regarded as a country providing the least subsidies, compared to other major markets, to renewable energy in electric vehicle and that may hamper the government's target of achieving the all-electric target by 2030. Various state governments and cities provide their own subsidies, Delhi, Rajasthan, Uttarakhand and Lakshadweep don't levy Bachundagar, Madhya Pradesh, Kerala, Gujarat and West Bengal offer partial rebate on BAT Delhi also provides a 15% subsidy of the base price of select electric cars, like Reva. It also exempts such cars from road tax and registration fees. Topic. Japan The Japanese government introduced the first electric vehicle incentive program in 1996, and it was integrated in 1998 with the Clean Energy Vehicles Introduction Project, which provided subsidies and tax discounts for the purchase of electric, natural gas, methanol and hybrid electric vehicles. 
The project provided a purchase subsidy of up to 50% the incremental costs of a clean energy vehicle as compared with the price of a conventional engine vehicle. This program was extended until 2003. In May 2009, the National Diet passed the Green Vehicle Purchasing Promotion Measure that went into effect on June 19, 2009, but retroactive to April 10, 2009. The program established tax deductions and exemptions for environmentally friendly and fuel-efficient vehicles, according to a set of stipulated environmental performance criteria, and the requirements are applied equally to both foreign and domestic produced vehicles. The program provides purchasing subsidies for two type of cases, consumers purchasing a new passenger car without trade-in non-replacement program, and for those consumers buying a new car trading and used car registered 13 years ago or earlier scrappage program. Topic: <laughs> Tonnage and acquisition tax reductions. New next-generation vehicles, including electric and fuel cell vehicles, plug-in hybrids, hybrid electric vehicles, clean diesel and natural gas vehicles are exempted from both the acquisition tax and the tonnage tax. Acquisition taxes on used vehicles will be reduced by 1.6% to 2.7%, or between 150,000 yen and 300,000 yen Electric and fuel cell vehicles have a 2.7% reduction while plug-in hybrids have a 2.4% reduction. These incentives are affected from April 1, 2009 until March 31, 2012 for the acquisition tax which is paid once at the time of purchase. The tonnage tax reductions are in effect from April 1, 2009 until April 30, 2012 and the incentive is applicable once, at the time of the first mandatory inspection, three years after the vehicle purchase. As an example, the amount exempted for the purchase of a new next-generation vehicle is 81,000 yen $975 corresponding to the acquisition tax, and 22,500 yen $271 for the tonnage tax, for a total of 103,500 yen $1,246. Automobile tax reductions Consumers purchasing new next-generation electric vehicles, including fuel cell vehicles, benefited from a 50% reduction of the annual automobile tax. These incentives were in effect from April 1, 2009 until March 31, 2010, applicable only once. Topic. Incentives for purchasing new green vehicles Subsidies for purchases of new environmentally friendly vehicles without scrapping a used car are 100,000 yen $1 for the purchase of a standard or small car, and 50,000 yen $550 for the purchase of a mini or K vehicle. Subsidies for purchasing trucks and buses meeting the stipulated fuel efficiency and emission criteria vary between 200,000 yen $2,100 to 900,000 yen $9,600. Subsidies for purchases of new environmentally friendly vehicles in the case of owners scrapping a 13-year or older vehicle are 250,000 yen $2,700 for the purchase of a standard or small car, and 125,000 thousand yen $1,300 for the purchase of a mini or K vehicle. Subsidies for purchasing trucks and buses meeting the stipulated fuel efficiency and emission criteria vary between 400,000 yen $4,300 to 1,800,000 yen dollars All incentives for new purchases with or without trading were applicable in Japan's fiscal year 2009, from April 1, 2009 through March 31, 2010. Topic. Philippines Under President Duterte's administration, the Tax Reform for Acceleration and Inclusion Act was signed into law, which has exemptions made for anyone buying an electric vehicle alongside hybrids.
Topic: <laughs> South Korea. In July 2016, the Ministry of Trade, Industry and Energy announced a plan to make electric car batteries run longer, build a network of charging stations and make electric car purchases and ownership more affordable. The government expects that the current and future policy programs will help increase the electric car market share in South Korea to 0.5% in 2017, up from 0.2% in 2015, and to achieve 5.3% in 2020. The government subsidy has in place a one time purchase subsidy for electric cars. Effective July 8, 2016, the subsidy was increased to 14 million won from 12 million won $10, Also starting in 2016, the purchase tax surcharges of electric cars will be reduced, and all electric car drivers will benefit from reductions in insurance premiums, expressway tolls and parking fees. The government plan calls for the deployment of fast charging stations in 2020 to be available at an average of one within a 2 km radius in the capital city of Seoul. In addition, 30,000 slow charging stations will be strategically located at about 4,000 apartment complexes nationwide by 2020. The government's plan also includes the development of an electric car battery, beginning in 2016, with energy density high enough to more than double the travel distance on a charge to 400 kilometers (250 miles). The government expects to increase the global market share of South Korean electric cars to match that of South Korean gasoline and diesel cars, which reached 8.5% based on sales by South Korea's two main car exporters, Hyundai Motor Company and Kia Motors. Europe Electrification of transport electromobility figures prominently in the Green Car Initiative GCI, included in the European Economic Recovery Plan. DGTREN is supporting a large European «electromobility» project on EVs and related infrastructure with a total budget of around €50 million Euros as part of the Green Car Initiative. There are measures to promote efficient vehicles in the Directive 2009-33, EC of the European Parliament and of the Council of 23 April 2009 on the promotion of clean and energy efficient road transport vehicles and in the Directive 2006-32, EC of the European Parliament and of the Council of 5 April 2006 on energy end-use efficiency and energy services. As of April 2011, 15 of the 27 European Union member states provide tax incentives for electrically chargeable vehicles, which includes all Western European countries plus the Czech Republic and Romania. Also 17 countries levy carbon dioxide-related taxes on passenger cars as a disincentive. The incentives consist of tax reductions and exemptions, as well as of bonus payments for buyers of PEVs, hybrid vehicles, and some alternative fuel vehicles. Austria Electric vehicles are exempted from the fuel consumption tax, levied upon the first registration, and from the monthly vehicle tax. In addition to tax breaks, hybrid vehicles and other alternative fuel vehicles benefit from a fuel consumption tax that pays bonuses to passenger cars with low carbon dioxide output. Alternative fuel vehicles, including hybrids, qualify for as much as €800 Euros around $1,120 in annual bonuses. This bonus was valid from 1 July 2008 until 31 August 2012. Additionally, cars with no carbon emissions qualify for a deduction of the VAT value added tax as of January 2016. Topic: <inaudible> Belgium. The Belgian government established a personal income tax deduction of 30% of the purchase price including VAT of a new electric vehicle up to 9190 euros. Plug-in hybrids are not eligible. This tax incentive ended on December 31, 2012. There is also available a tax deduction up to 40% for investments in external recharging stations publicly accessible, to a maximum of €250. Euros. 
The Wallonia Regional Government has an additional €4,500 eco bonus for cars registered before December 31, 2011. Topic. Bulgaria Electric vehicles, including cars, motorbikes and mopeds, are exempt from the annual circulation tax. Cyprus Vehicles with emissions less than 120 grams of carbon dioxide per kilometer are exempt from paying registration taxes. Topic: <inaudible> Czech Republic. Electric, hybrid and other alternative fuel vehicles used for business purposes are exempt from the road tax. Denmark In 2016, battery electric vehicles lost access to their registration tax exemption. The registration tax will gradually be phased back in until 2020. As of 2016 there are only 7,000 electric cars in Denmark. As of late 2018 another push for delay of the gradually phasing beyond the initial 20% of the normal up 150% registration tax is expected to pass with a wide majority resulting to final phase being pushed to 2023. This also includes even larger base registration deduction of 40k DDK in 2019 while keeping the 20% and increasing deduction to tilde 77,000 Danish krona in 2020 together with first big substantial increase to 40% of normal registration tax. This was an agreed minimum deal of improvements most parties could get behind due to the symbolic meaning that cars under 400,000 Danish krona including VAT which itself has deductions for efficient cars would experience the old full registration tax exception matching 2019-2020 delivers of the cheaper but long-range models such as Tesla Model 3 LR, Leaf 60 kWh model and Hyundai Kona Electric 60 kWh model. These models could be argued being the first non-premium cars useful for the people with the longest daily drives which makes the close to or financial positive compared to cheap compacts. Until 2019 only premium cars, under much fuss due to the large per car exemptions, or short range users had a financial incentive alone to buy a full BEV instead of a mild hybris. This 2018 push was after yet another round of discussions of even further incentives failed, a current split between moving too slowly and losing too much of the 57 billion Danish krona yearly income. 2018 law includes backstop moving from 5k to 10k cars sold since start of 2016 under this plan at which point incentives has to be revisited. Estonia. No grants towards the purchase of plug-in or electric vehicles as of 2016. Electric vehicles are exempt from the city public parking fees and can use bus lanes. From 2011 to 2014 Estonia has allocated a total of €9 million Euros in grants towards the purchase of battery electric vehicles, ended 7 August 2014. From 2011 to 2014, Credex has allocated grants totaling €10,500,000, the average grant per car was €16,500. The grant has helped the purchase of over 650 electric cars in Estonia. At that time, a country-wide quick-charging network, Chademo 500 volts, 120A and Type 2400 volts, 32A, was established. Topic. Finland The Prime Minister of Finland 2003 -2010, Mr. Matti Vanhanen has mentioned that he wants to see more electric cars on Finnish roads as soon as possible and with any cost to the governmental car-related tax incomes. Charging at home from motor and cabin heating outlets common in all Nordic countries has been determined to be a possible load on the grid, although this load is expected to mainly take place at night when overall demand is lower. 
If all cars in Finland run totally on electricity, it will add 7 to 9 terawatt hours annually to the load, which corresponds to 10% of Finland's annual consumption. Online route planners like http wwwupladningnu list a daily growing number of free charging outlets set up by merchants and private individuals, making it possible to drive an EV for free from Helsinki through Sweden all the way to Copenhagen. For the period of 2018 to 2021, 6 million euros annually will be allocated towards the purchase of electric cars and conversion of petrol cars to E85 and gas. An individual registering a new electric car in the period January 1, 2018 to the 30th of November 2021 is eligible for a grant of 2000 euros if the purchase price of the car is 50000 euros or less. In the end of 2017, there were 1449 electric cars registered in Finland. Topic: France Since 2008 France has a bonus malice system offering a financial incentive, or bonus, for the purchase of cars with low carbon emissions, and a fee, or malice, for the purchase of high emission vehicles. The bonus applies to private and company vehicles purchased on or after 5 December 2007 and are deduced from the purchase price of the vehicle. The malice penalty applies to all vehicles registered after 1 January 2008, and is added at the time of registration. Since 2009, every family with more than two children receives a deduction from the malice of 20 grams of CO2 per kilometer per child. 2012-2014 until July 31, 2012, a premium up to €5,000, under the bonus malice system, was granted for the purchase of new cars with CO2 emissions of 60 grams per kilometre or less which benefited all electric cars and any plug-in hybrid with such low emissions. Vehicles emitting up to 125 grams per kilometre or less, such as conventional hybrids and natural gas vehicles, were granted up to €2,000. The incentive could not exceed 20% of the sales price including VAT, increased with the cost of the battery if it is rented. Effective on August 1, 2012, the government increased the bonus for electric cars up to €7,000 but capped at 30% of the vehicle price including VAT. The price includes any battery leasing charges, and therefore, electric cars which need a battery leasing contract also are eligible for the bonus. For example, an electric car sold for €23,333 including VAT was eligible for the maximum bonus of €7,000. The emission level for the maximum bonus was raised to 20 grams per kilometre or less. Cars with emission levels between 20 and 50 grams per kilometer were eligible to a bonus of up to 5,000 euros, and between 50 and 60 grams per kilometer were eligible to a bonus of up to 4,500 euros. After this limit, the bonus dropped to 550 euros. The fee schedule for the bonus malice was modified in 2013. Effective November 1, 2013, the bonus was reduced from €7,000 to €6,300 for all electrics and any other vehicle with CO2 emissions of less than 21 grams per kilometre. Vehicles emitting between 21 and 60 grams per kilometre, such as plug-in hybrids and conventional hybrids, were eligible to a bonus up to €4,000, and for emissions between 61 and 90 grams per kilometre up to €150, Euros, down from €550. Euros. Effective January 1, 2014, the fee schedule for the malice was increased to a maximum penalty of €8,000 from €6,000 for vehicles emitting over 200 grams per kilometre. Flex fuel vehicles remained exempt from the malice fee. A neutral class applies to vehicles emitting between 91 to 130 grams per kilometre. 2015-2016 From April 1, 2015, a super bonus was introduced, increasing the financial incentive to a cumulative total of €10,000, consisting of the regular bonus of €6,300 for purchasing a pure electric car, plus up to €3,700 for customers scrapping a diesel-powered car in circulation before 1 January 2001. 
In the case of plug-in hybrids with CO2 emission levels between 21 and 60 g per kilometer, the purchase bonus was €4,000 plus the scrapping premium of €3,700. Also a specific €500 Euros grant was introduced for families which are below the income tax threshold who buy an ordinary new or second-hand car below certain CO2 emission thresholds or a hybrid or electric car. Effective January 4, 2016, the €6,300 bonus limited to 27% of the purchase price of vehicles emitting up to 20 grams per kilometer was kept. This bonus corresponds to pure electric vehicles and those equipped with a range extender. Vehicles emitting between 21 and 60 grams per kilometer are entitled to a €1,000 bonus. This bonus corresponds to the majority of plug-in hybrids. Conventional hybrid passenger cars emitting between 61 and 110 grams per kilometer with sufficient level of hybridization, with an electric motor with an output power of not be less than 10 kilowatts, are entitled to a €750 Euros bonus. Diesel-powered hybrids, such as the PSA Hybrid 4, are no longer eligible for the bonus, even if the car emits less than 110 grams per kilometer of CO2. The combined €10,000 super bonus for the purchase or lease of a new all-electric car was maintained. To be eligible for the additional scrappage bonus, the old diesel-powered car have to be owned for at least a year and in circulation before the 1st of January 2006. The new vehicle must not be sold within six months of acquisition or have traveled less than 6,000 kilometers 3,700 miles. The scrappage bonus for the purchase of an all-electric car was maintained at €3,700, while the bonus for plug-in hybrid car emitting between 21 and 60 grams per kilometer was set at €2,500. Only individuals or professionals are eligible for the scrappage bonus. Commercial vehicles are not eligible. Neither demonstration vehicles are eligible to the superbonus unless the vehicles are sold or leased within one year following the date of first registration. As of September 2016, the scrappage bonus of €3,700 for trading in old diesel-powered cars has been granted to more than 10,000 purchase transactions. 2017 As of September 2016, the government proposal to be in force from 1 January 2017 provides that the €10,000 super bonus for scrapping a diesel vehicle over 10 years old will be renewed. However, the bonus for the purchase of a pure electric car will drop to €6,000 from €6,300 in 2016, but to compensate, the additional scrappage bonus will be increased to €4,000 from €3,700 in 2016. Also, the government plans to introduce a purchase price cap to the vehicles eligible for the bonus, and to introduce a new bonus for two-wheeled motor vehicles. For the more polluting vehicles, the government intends to increase the maximum malice fee to €10,000 from €8,000 in 2016 for vehicles emitting more than 191 grams per kilometer, lowering the limit from 200 grams per kilometer in 2016. The government intends to maintain the €1,000 purchase bonus for plug-in hybrids with a CO2 emission level between 21 and 60 grams per kilometer. However, the proposal does not include anything about the conversion premium for scrapping a 10-year-old diesel car for the purchase of a plug-in hybrid. The purchase bonus for non-rechargeable hybrid vehicles will be eliminated. <laughs> Germany Nationale Plattform Elektromobilität NPE is a German government initiative to develop Germany into a leading market for electric mobility. In May 2010, under its National Programme for Electric Mobility, Chancellor Angela Merkel set the goal to bring 1 million electric vehicles on German roads by 2020. However, the government also announced that it would not provide subsidies to the sales of plug-in electric cars but instead it will only fund research in the area of electric mobility. Electric vehicles and plug-ins are exempt from the annual circulation tax for a period of five years from the date of their first registration. 
In 2016, the annual circulation tax exemption was extended from 5 to 10 years, backdated to the 1st of January 2016. The private use of a company car is treated as taxable income in Germany and measured at a flat monthly rate of 1% of the vehicle's gross list price. So plug-in electric cars have been at a disadvantage since their price tag can be as much as double that of a car using a conventional internal combustion engine due to the high cost of the battery. In June 2013 German legislators approved a law that ends the tax disadvantage for corporate plug-in electric cars. The law, backdated to 1 January 2013, allows private users to offset the list price with €500 Euros per unit of battery size, expressed in kilowatt-hours The maximum offset was set at €10,000 corresponding to a 20 kilowatt-hours battery. The amount one can offset will sink annually by €50 Euros per kilowatt-hour. The range criteria will rise to 40 kilometers, 25 miles, starting in 2018. As part of the package of financial incentives approved in 2016, private owners of plug-in electric vehicles that charge their cars in their employer premises are exempted from declaring this perk as a cash benefit in their income tax return. Employers who provide this perk are allowed to discount from their income tax a 25% of the lump sum value of the cash benefit. These two fiscal benefits apply only from 1 January 2017 until the end of 2020. In August 2014, the federal government announced its plan to introduce non-monetary incentives through new legislation to be effective by 1 February 2015. The proposed user benefits include measures to privilege battery-powered cars, fuel cell vehicles and some plug-in hybrids, just like Norway does, by granting local governments the authority to allow these vehicles into bus lanes, and to offer free parking and reserved parking spaces in locations with charging points. Not all plug-in hybrids will qualify for the benefits, only those with CO2 emissions of no more than 50 grams per kilometer or an all-electric range of over 30 kilometers 19 miles are eligible. According to the fourth progress report of the German National Electric Mobility Platform, only about 24,000 plug-in electric cars are on German roads by the end of November 2014, well behind the target of 100,000 unit goal set for 2014. As a result, Chancellor Angela Merkel recognized in December 2014 that the government has to provide more incentives to meet the goal of having one million electric cars on the country's roads by 2020. Among others, and based on the recommendations of the report, the federal government is considering to offer a tax break for zero-emission company cars, more subsidies to expand charging infrastructure, particularly to deploy more public fast charges, and more public funding for research and development of the next generation of rechargeable batteries. Purchase incentive At the beginning of 2016, German politicians from the three parties in Mrs. Merkel's ruling coalition and auto executives began talks to introduce a subsidy for green car buyers worth up to €5,000 $5, to boost sales of electric and plug-in hybrid cars. As of February 2016, the German government proposal is for the auto industry to cover 40% of the cost of the purchase subsidy. Private buyers would get the full €5,000 subsidy, while corporate buyers would receive €3,000 for each electric car, and the program is expected to run until 2020, the deadline set to achieve the goal of 1 million electric cars on German roads. Incentives will fall by €500 each year. In March 2016, Nissan Europe announced its support to the green car incentive and its commitment to double the government's e-premium incentive when buying a Nissan electric car, with a reduction of the purchase price of the same amount of the subsidy. Nissan Center Europe CEO said, We remain convinced that the goal of 1 million electric cars by 2020 is still achievable. According to Nissan if from now on electric car sales double every year until 2020, it is still possible to achieve the government goal. An incentive scheme to promote plug-in electric vehicle adoption was approved in April 2016 with a budget of €1 billion, Euros, $1 billion. A total of €600 million, Euros, $678 million is reserved for the purchase subsidies, which are expected to run until all the money is dispersed, estimated to last until 2019 at the latest. 
Another €300 million Euros $339 million are budgeted to finance the deployment of charging stations in cities and on autobahn highway stops. And another €100 million, Euros $113 million would go toward purchasing electric cars for federal government fleets. The program is aimed to promote the sale of 400,000 electric vehicles. The cost of the purchase incentive is shared equally between the government and automakers. Electric car buyers get a €4,000 4 discount while buyers of plug-in hybrid vehicles get a discount of €3,000 Premium cars, such as the Tesla Model S and BMW i8, are not eligible to the incentive because there is a cap of €60,000 for the purchase price. Only electric vehicles purchased after 18 May 2016 are eligible for the bonus and the owner must keep the new electric car at least nine months. The same rule applies for leasing. As of September 2016, BMW, Citroën, Daimler, Ford, Hyundai, Kia, Mitsubishi, Nissan, Peugeot, Renault, Toyota, Volkswagen, and Volvo had signed up to participate in the scheme. In May 2016, Nissan announced the company decided to raise the bonus with an additional €1,000 $1 to €5,000 5 for customers of its all-electric LEAF car and ENV200 utility van. The online application system to claim the bonus went into effect on 2 July 2016. As of September 2016, a total of 26 plug-in electric cars and vans are eligible for the purchase bonus. According to the Federal Office of Economics and Export Control a total of 4,451 applications have been made for the government subsidy for the purchase of a plug-in electric model as of 30 September 2016, consisting of 2,650 all-electrics and 1,801 plug-in hybrids. As of 30 September 2016, the federal states with the most claims are Bayern 1130, Baden-Württemberg 873, and Nordrhein-Westfalen 726. As of 1 September 2016, the following 26 plug-in electric cars and vans are eligible for the purchase bonus: Audi A3 e-tron, BMW 225xe, BMW 330e, BMW i3, Citroen Berlingo Electric, Citroen C0, Ford Focus Electric, Kia Soul EV, Mercedes-Benz B-Class Electric Drive B250e, Mercedes-Benz C350e, Mitsubishi i MiEV, Mitsubishi Outlander PHEV, Nissan ENV 205 and 7-seater Combi, Nissan Leaf, Peugeot Ion, Peugeot Partner Electric, Renault Kangoo ZE. Renault Zoe, Smart 4-2 electric drive, Toyota Prius plug-in hybrid, Volkswagen e-Golf, Volkswagen e-Up, Volkswagen Golf GTE, Volkswagen Passat GTE, and Volvo V60 plug-in hybrid. Greece From 2011 to June 2016, all electric vehicles were exempt from the registration tax. From 1 July 2016 onwards the registration tax for hybrid vehicles was reduced to 50%. == Hungary All hybrid and electric vehicles are exempt from registration tax. The government announced that from October 27, 2016, electric vehicles would be eligible for a 21% rebate of the gross purchase price, capped at a 1,500,000 feet Euros at the December 2016 exchange rate. Furthermore, to promote electric cars, the government has added some other regulatory incentives, such as green license plates, and simplified tax and regulations on electric charge points. By 2020, the government expects that there will be 30,000 environmentally friendly cars on Hungarian roads. Iceland All electric vehicles are exempt from VAT up to ICA 6 million, and the tax is applied at the normal rate for the remainder of the price. 
Electric vehicles also get free parking in the city center for up to 90 minutes, which also applies to cars with CO2 emissions of less than 120 g per kilometer and weigh less than 1,200 kg, which excludes several electric cars such as the Tesla Model S. Ireland Series production EVs were exempted from VRT until December 2012. The VRT exemption was replaced by a €5,000 credit against the tax. Annual motor tax for EVs is €120. The government has set a target of 10% for all vehicles on Irish roads to be electric by 2020. The ESB ECA electric vehicle charging network serves as the main charging network for the island of Ireland and has rapidly expanded in recent years. Currently the network is free to use with an RFID card provided by ESB to EV owners who wish to use the network. The network aims to provide rapid charging every 30 km on major routes and as of 2015 has almost 2,000 standard charging points all provide connection via IEC 62196 Type 2 Menikas, around half are 22 kW with the remainder a mix of 3.6 kW and 7.4 kW. There are around 100 CHAdeMO rapid chargers with over 70 located outside the Dublin metro area. All rapid chargers installed since mid-2014 have been triple standard CHAdeMO, combined charging system, AC 43 kW. Four rapid chargers in Dublin and two rapid chargers in Belfast were co-funded by the EU as part of the UK-Ireland RCN programme. The UK charging network operated by Ecotricity has a single CHAdeMO-only rapid charger at IKEA Belfast. This is the sole rapid charger on the island that is not part of the ESB ECARS network. Sustainable Energy Authority of Ireland offers a government grant of up to €5,000 for the purchase of a new electric car. Electric and hybrid vehicles had a reduction of up to €2,500 off the registration tax between July 2008 and December 2010. However this grant is only available on vehicles on an approved list of models which must be sold by a dealer registered for the scheme. No grant applies where a vehicle is imported privately. The grant is reduced to €3,800 for business purchases or those who require finance to purchase the vehicle, however some importers will report financed private sales as cash sales to acquire the full grant. As of September 2014, plug-in electric car purchases are eligible for a government credit worth up to €5,000 about $6,500. Vehicle registration tax VRT, up to €5,000 is also waived for electric cars. Also, all electric car owners pay the lowest rate of annual road tax, which is based on emissions. In addition, the first 2,000 electric cars registered in Ireland are eligible for installation of a free home charging points worth about €1,000 about Italy Electric vehicles are exempt from the annual circulation tax or ownership tax for five years from the date of their first registration. Thereafter, EVs benefit from a 75% reduction of the tax rate applied to equivalent gasoline-powered vehicles. In the region of Lombardy, electric vehicles are exempt from the annual ownership tax. Latvia <inaudible> 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 Electric vehicles, including cars, goods vehicles, buses, and motorcycles, are exempt from payment of the vehicle operation tax. 2. Luxembourg Buyers of electric vehicles and other vehicles emitting 60 grams per kilometer or less of carbon dioxide are eligible to receive a premium of €3,000 around $4,200, this premium ended 31 December 2011. In order to qualify for the rebate, the owner must have concluded an agreement to buy electricity from renewable energy. Topic. 
Monaco Buyers of electric vehicles and plug-in hybrids are eligible to receive €9,000 around $12,600 from the Monegasque government. In addition vehicles owners are allowed to park free at any public parking facility. Netherlands Considering the potential of plug-in electric vehicles in the country due to its relative small size and geography, the Dutch government set a target of 15,000 to 20,000 electric vehicles with three or more wheels on the roads in 2015, 200,000 vehicles in 2020, and 1 million vehicles in 2025. The first government target was achieved in 2013, two years earlier, thanks to the sales peak that occurred at the end of 2013. According to official figures, 30,086 plug-in electric vehicles with three or more wheels have been registered in the country through the 31st of December 2013. Initially, the Dutch government set incentives such as the total exemption of the registration fee and road taxes, which resulted in savings of approximately 5,324 euros for private car owners over 4 years and 19,000 euros for corporate owners over 5 years. Other vehicles including hybrid electric vehicles were also exempt from these taxes if they emit less than 95 grams per kilometer for diesel powered vehicles or less than 110 grams per kilometer for gasoline powered vehicles. The exemption from the registration tax ended on January 1, 2014, and thereafter all electric vehicles pay a 4% registration fee and plug-in hybrids a 7% fee. In addition, the national government offers through the Ministry of Infrastructure and the Environment a 3000 euros subsidy on the purchase of all electric taxis or delivery vans. This subsidy increases to €5,000 per vehicle in Amsterdam, Rotterdam, The Hague, Utrecht, and Arnhem-Nijmegen metropolitan area. An additional subsidy is offered by several local government for the purchase of full electric taxis and vans, €5,000 in Amsterdam and €3,000 in Limburg and Tilburg. In Amsterdam EV owners also have access to parking spaces reserved for battery electric vehicles, so they avoid the current wait for a parking place in Amsterdam, which can reach up to 10 years in some parts of the city. Free charging is also offered in public parking spaces. EV owners in the city of Rotterdam are entitled to one year of free parking in downtown and enjoy subsidies of up to €1,450 if they install a home charger using green electricity. The city also introduced in 2014 a scrappage program to remove old polluting vehicles to improve air quality in the city. Rotterdam offers a €2,500 incentive for business buyers to replace the old vehicles with all electric vehicles. The subsidy is only available to the first 5,000 applicants that buy an eligible vehicle before the end of December 2013. Other factors contributing to the rapid adoption of plug-in electric vehicles are the relative small size of the country, which reduces range anxiety the Netherlands stretches about 100 miles 160 kilometers east to west, a long tradition of environmental activism, high gasoline prices $8.50 per gallon as of January 2013, which make the cost of running a car on electricity five times cheaper, and also some EV leasing programs provide free or discounted gasoline powered vehicles for those who want to take a vacation driving long distances. With all of these incentives and tax breaks, plug-in electric cars have similar driving costs to conventional cars. Initially, sales of plug-in electric car were lower than expected, and during 2012 the segment captured a market share of less than 1% of new car sales in the country. As a result of the end of the total exemption of the registration fee, the segment sales peaked at the end of 2013, and plug-in electric car sales reached a market share of 5.34% of new car sales in 2013. The total cost of the tax exemptions for the Dutch Treasury of the more than 22,000 plug-in electric vehicles sold in 2013 was estimated at €500 million Euros $691 million. Topic. Norway The Parliament of Norway set the goal to reach 50,000 zero-emission vehicles by 2018. 
Among the existing incentives, all electric cars are exempt in Norway from all non recurring vehicle fees, including purchase taxes, which are extremely high for ordinary cars, and 25% VAT on purchase, together making electric car purchase price competitive with conventional cars. As an example, by early 2013 the price of the top-selling Nissan Leaf is 240,690 krona around $42,500 while the purchase price of the 1.3 Lieutenant Volkswagen Golf is 238,000 krona about $42,000. Electric vehicles are also exempt from the annual road tax, all public parking fees, and toll payments, as well as being able to use bus lanes. Government officials reserved in 1999 the L prefix for exclusive use of all electric vehicles in order to be able to enforce on the road the benefits available to EVs. As the L series is set to end at L99999. Most vehicles in the country have five-digit registration numbers between 10,000 and 99,999. The Norwegian Public Roads Agency opted for the prefix "-ek", in the second series of plates, to signify "-elektrisk kjortoy", Norwegian for electric vehicle, and because the sale of electric vehicles is expected to continue at a rapid pace, meaning that the second phase of license plates is likely to run out as well, the "-ev". Prefix has been set aside for future electric cars. In July 2016, as the stock of L prefix plates was almost depleted, the first electric vehicles registered with the new EC series were on the road. Until June 2013, plug in hybrids have not been eligible for these benefits. Because the Norwegian tax system levies higher taxes to heavier vehicles, plug-in hybrids are more expensive than similar conventional cars due to the extra weight of the battery pack and its additional electric components. Beginning on 1 July 2013, the existing weight allowance for conventional hybrids and plug-in hybrids of 10% will be increased to 15% for PHEVs. In September 2013 the Norwegian Parliament approved, as part of the revised 2014 budget, an exemption from the 25% VAT for leasing electric vehicles effective on 1 January 2014. However, as of September 2014, the exemption has not gone into effect because the Minister of Finance decided to defer the measure, pending a formal consultation with the EFTA Surveillance Authority ESA, to ensure that the VAT exemption for leasing was not in violation of the European Economic Area Agreement. The government's loss of revenue due to the still not implemented leasing exemption is estimated at about 47 million krone, around $7.3 million, per year. One member of parliament has criticized the government for the delay. He had argued that the initial VAT exemption for all electric vehicles was never approved in ESA. In addition, an ESA spokesman confirmed that the government has not sent any request as of September 2014, nor has ESA received any complaints about Norway's original EV tax exemption. The MP said he will demand that the decision be implemented when parliament meets in October 2014. The target of 50,000 electric cars on Norwegian roads was reached on 20 April 2015, more than two years earlier than expected. In early March 2015 negotiations began among parties represented in the parliament to define the future of all motor vehicles and fuel taxes. The Liberal Party wanted all the benefits to continue beyond the established quota. The Ministry of Finance also made a comprehensive review of all motor vehicle taxes. The two purchase tax exemptions cost the government about 3 billion krone around $480 million in lost revenue just in 2014, and up to 4 billion krone around $640 million if all the other benefits are accounted for. Despite passing the established cap of 50,000 electric cars, the tax benefits were expected to continue at least until the end of 2016. Topic. Phase out of incentives In May 2015 the government decided to keep the existing incentives through 2017, and the political parties in Parliament agreed to reduce and phase out some of the incentives. Beginning in January 2018, electric car owners will be required to pay half of the yearly road license fee and the full rate as of 2020. 
The value added tax that exemption for electric cars will end in 2018, but replaced by a new scheme, which may be subjected to a ceiling that could be reduced as technology develops. The agreement also gave local authorities the right to decide whether electric cars can park for free and use public transport lanes. In March 2016, the Ministry of Transport issued new regulations for parking in locations with access to the general public. The new parking regulations, that go into effect on January 1, 2017, terminated the free parking for zero-emission vehicles, but established that municipalities can introduce payment exemption for electric and hydrogen-powered motor vehicles on municipal parking locations. As of September 2016, the city councils of Trondheim and Tunsberg decided to introduce full payment for EVs from 2017. The cities of Bodo and Trumsa will introduce payment for parking in Downton but exempted parking outside the city's centre, and the cities of Oslo, Mandel and Drammen decided to keep free parking for zero emission vehicles. Topic: <laughs> Portugal The Portuguese government launched in early 2008 a national program for electric mobility called Mobi E. Mobi E is deploying a national electric mobility system. The system was designed to be scalable and used in multiple geographies, overcoming the current situation of lack of communication among the different electric mobility experiences that are being deployed in Europe. By the first semester of 2011, a wide public network of 1,300 normal and 50 fast charging points will be fully implemented in the main 25 cities of the country. EVs are fully exempt from both the vehicle tax due upon purchase and the annual circulation tax Personal income tax provides an allowance of €803 Euros upon the purchase of EVs. EVs are exempt from the 5% to 10% company car tax rates which are part of the corporation income tax. The budget law provides for an increase of the depreciation costs related to the purchase of EVs for the purpose of corporation income tax. Portugal established a government subsidy of €5,000 for the first 5,000 new electric cars sold in the country. In addition, there is in place a €1,500 incentive if the consumer turns in a used car as part of the down payment for the new electric car. Electric cars are also exempt from the registration tax. Romania As of April 2011, Romania offers a government grant of up to 25% of the price up to a maximum of €5,000 for the purchase of a new electric car. Furthermore, through the Cash for Clunkers program, scrappage program those who wish to purchase an electric car will receive vouchers of over €5,000 total in return for the used car. For hybrid vehicles, with or without plug-in capabilities, a €550 Euros grant is offered, plus an additional €160 Euros grant for hybrid vehicles emitting under 100 grams per kilometre of CO2. Combined with the Cash for Clunkers program, the total grant is up to €2,200. Electric and hybrid vehicles are exempt from the environmental tax, which also acts as a registration tax. From March 2015, electric vehicles are also exempt from the annual tax, while hybrid vehicles have a 95% reduction. In 2016, the Rabla Plus program offered a government grant of €5,000 for the purchase of a new electric car. In 2017, the Rabla Plus grant program increased to €10,000 for the purchase of a pure electric vehicle. Bev. Furthermore, car owners will receive an additional €1,400 if they end their registration of a car older than eight years. <inaudible> Spain Spain's government aimed to have 1 million electric cars on the roads by 2014 as part of a plan to cut energy consumption and dependence on expensive imports, Industry Minister Miguel Sebastián said. In May 2011, the Spanish government approved a 72 million euros, 103 million dollars fund for year 2011 to promote electric vehicles. 
The incentives include direct subsidies for the acquisition of new electric cars for up to 25% of the purchase price, before tax, to a maximum of €6,000 per vehicle $8,600, and 25% of the gross purchase price of other electric vehicles such as buses and vans, with a maximum of €15,000 or €30,000, depending on the range and type of vehicle. Several regional government grant incentives for the purchase of alternative fuel vehicles including electric and hybrid vehicles. In Aragon, Asturias, Baleares, Madrid, Navarre, Valencia, Castilla-La Mancha, Murcia, Castilla y León electric vehicles are eligible to a €6,000 tax incentive and hybrids to €2,000. In September 2011 the Swedish government approved a 200 million KR program, effective starting in January 2012, to provide a subsidy of 40,000 KR per car for the purchase of electric cars and other super green cars, with ultra-low carbon emissions below 50 grams of carbon dioxide per kilometre. There is also an exemption from the annual circulation tax for the first five years from the date of their first registration that benefits owners of electric vehicles with an energy consumption of 37 kWh per 100 km or less, and hybrid vehicles with CO2 emissions of 120 g per km or less. In addition, for both electric and hybrid vehicles, the taxable value of the car for the purposes of calculating the benefit in kind of a company car under personal income tax is reduced by 40% compared with the corresponding or comparable gasoline or diesel powered car. The reduction of the taxable value has a cap of 16,000 kr per year. As of July 2014, a total of 5,028 new, super clean cars had been registered in the country since January 2012, and because the government allocated funds for a total of 5,000 super clean cars between 2012 and 2014, the fund has been exhausted. Bill Sweden, the National Association for the Automobile Industry, requested the government an additional 100 million kr to cover the subsidy for another 2,500 registrations of new super clean cars between August and December 2014. In December 2014 the Riksdagen, the Swedish parliament, approved an appropriation of 215 million kr to finance the super clean car subsidies in 2015. The appropriation for 2015, according to the parliamentary decision and subsequent government decision, was to also be used for the retroactive payment of the super green cars registered in 2014 that did not receive the subsidy. The government raised the appropriation for the super green car rebate by 132 million kr for 2015 and by 94 million kr for 2016. Beginning in 2016, only zero emissions cars are entitled to receive the full 40,000 kr premium, while other super green cars, plug-in hybrids, receive half premium. The exemption for the first five years of ownership from the annual circulation tax is still in place. In 2016, in order to promote the introduction of electricity-powered buses in the market, the government planned to allocate 50 million kr for 2016 and 100 million kr per year between 2017 and 2019 to introduce an electric bus premium. Two alternative proposals are being considered by the Swedish government regarding the introduction of a bonus malice system. Both proposals entail changes to vehicle and car benefit taxation and the premium system for purchases of new cars. An official inquiry report was due by 29 April 2016. The goal is for the system to enter into force on 1 January 2017. The new bonus malice system, starting 1 July 2018, will offer electric car buyers a bonus of 60,000 Swedish kroner. Topic. Switzerland Switzerland has a car import tax which is 4% of the purchase price before adding the VAT which is waived for electric cars. Since Switzerland consists of 26 cantons which have their own legislature, additional incentives for plug-in electric vehicles differ between the respective regions. The current list can be downloaded from the website of the Swiss Department of Energy. There are no additional incentives on the actual purchase price, but some cantons offer road tax cuts. 
The Swiss road tax is a yearly recurring fixed amount calculated based on the specifications of the taxpayer's car. Currently, only the cantons Glarus GL, Zorlotern so, Ticino TI, and Zurich ZH are completely waiving the tax for plug-in electric vehicles. Calculation example for Zurich based on a usual car with the following specification. Engine 2L Total weight 1800 kg Energy efficiency C Year 2013 the resulting tax to be paid per year will be 278 SFR Hence when calculating with a life expectancy of 10 years the car owner in this example might save around 2780 SFR when buying a plug-in electric car However, since the tax on fossil fuels are relatively high in all European countries, including Switzerland, there is still an indirect, but quite strong incentive for car buyers to decide for energy-efficient vehicles. Based on the following examples, Fuel economy, 7.8 L, 100 km, 30 mpg US, unleaded Driving habits, 15,000 km, 9,300 miles, per year Fuel tax, 0.7312 SFR, per litre 2.7679 SFR, per gallon Carbon tax, since January 1, 2014, 0.1414 SFR, per litre 0.5353 SFR, per gallon The resulting taxes on the burned fuels will be around 1,021 SFR, per year, which results in 10,210 SFR, over the car's 10-year lifetime. Topic: United Kingdom. Topic: <inaudible> Plug-in car grant. The plug-in car grant started on the 1st of January 2011 and is available across the UK. The program reduces the upfront cost of eligible cars by providing a 25% grant towards the cost of new plug-in cars capped at GB £5,000 $7,450. From 1 April 2015, the purchase price cap was raised to cover up to 35% discount of the vehicle's recommended retail price, up to the already existing GB £5,000 limit. This change means electric cars priced under GB £20,000 will be able to take advantage of most or all of the £5,000 discount. Both private and business fleet buyers are eligible for this grant, which is received at the point of purchase and the subsidy is claimed back by the manufacturer afterwards. The subsidy program is managed in a similar way to the grant made as part of the 2009 car scrappage scheme, allowing consumers to buy an eligible car discounted at the point of purchase with the subsidy claimed back by the manufacturer afterwards. The government announced in April 2014 that funding for the full grant of up to GB £5,000 will remain in place until either 50,000 grants have been issued or 2017, whichever is first. As forecasts estimated that the scheme will reach its 50,000 limit around November 2015, the government announced in August 2015 that the plug-in car grant will continue until at least February 2016 for all plug-in cars with CO2 emissions of 75 grams per kilometre of under. The government also announced that a minimum of GB £200 million, $311 million has been made available to continue the plug-in car grant. Vehicles eligible for the subsidy must meet the following criteria. Vehicle type, only ultra-low emission cars are eligible, vehicle category M1. Motorbikes, quadricycles and vans are not covered. Carbon dioxide exhaust emissions – Vehicles must emit equal or less than 75 grams of carbon dioxide CO2 per kilometre driven. Range – Electric vehicles EVs must be able to travel a minimum of 70 miles 110 kilometers between charges. Plug-in hybrid electric vehicles PHEVs must have a minimum all-electric range of 10 miles 16 kilometers. Minimum top speed – Vehicles must be able to reach a speed of 60 mph or more. 
Warranty – Vehicles must have a 3-year or 60,000 miles kilometers vehicle warranty guarantee and a 3-year battery and electric drive train warranty, with the option of extending the battery warranty for an extra 2 years drive train means the parts that send power from the engine to the wheels. These include the clutch, transmission, gearbox, drive shafts, U-joints and differential. Battery performance – Vehicles must have either a minimum 5-year warranty on the battery and electric drive train as standard, or extra evidence of battery performance to show reasonable performance after 3 years of use. Electrical safety – Vehicles must comply with certain regulations UNECE Reg 100.01 that show that they are electrically safe. Crash safety – To make sure cars will be safe in a crash, they must either have, EC whole vehicle type approval ECWVTA, not small series or evidence that the car has appropriate levels of safety as judged by international standards. In February 2015 the government announced that to take account of rapidly developing technology, and the growing range of ULEVs on the British market, the criteria for the plug-in car grant was updated and from April 2015, eligible ultra-low emission vehicles vehicles ULEVs must meet criteria in one of the following categories depending on emission levels and zero emission capable mileage, with a technology neutral approach, which means that hydrogen fuel cell cars are also eligible for the grant. Category 1 – CO2 emissions of less than 50 g per kilometer and a zero emission range of at least 70 miles 110 kilometers. Category 2 – CO2 emissions of less than 50 g per kilometer and a zero emission range between 10 to 69 miles 16 to 111 kilometers. Category 3 – CO2 emissions of 50 to 75 g per kilometer and a zero emission range of at least 20 miles 32 kilometers. .In December 2015, the Department for Transport DFT announced that plug-in car grant was extended until March 2018 to encourage more than 100,000 UK motorists to buy cleaner vehicles. A total funding of GB £400 million $600 million is available for the extension. To reflect the changes in the British market, the criteria for the plug-in car grant was updated and the maximum grant drops from GB £5,000 to GB £4,500 For the extension, the amount of the grant is linked in directly with the Office for Low Emission Vehicles 3 vehicle categories issued in April 2015. The eligible ultra-low emission vehicles ULEVs must meet criteria in one of three categories depending on emission levels CO2 emissions bands between 50 and 75 grams per kilometer and zero emission capable mileage minimum of 10 miles 16 kilometers with a technology neutral approach which means that hydrogen fuel cell cars are eligible for the grant. The updated scheme went into force on the 1st of March 2016. A price cap is in place with all category 1 plug-in vehicles eligible for the full grant no matter what their purchase price, while category 2 and 3 models with a list price of more than GB £60,000 tilde $90,000 are eligible for the grant. Vehicles with a zero emission range of at least 70 miles 110 km Category 1, including hydrogen fuel cell vehicles, get a full GB £4,500 $6,700, but plug-in hybrids Categories 2 and 3 costing under GB £60,000 $90,000 receive GB £2,500 $3,725 under the extended scheme, some plug-in hybrid sports car are no longer be eligible for the grant, such as the BMW i8 because of its GB £100,000 $150,000 purchase price tag. The grant scheme will come under review when a cumulative total of 40,000 Category 1 claims, and 45,000 Category 2 and 3 combined sales have been made. Both these totals will include cars sold before March 2016. As of October 2016, the following 31 cars available in the British market are eligible for the grant according to their category 
Eligible Category 1 Vehicles BMW i3, BYD e6, Citroen C0, Ford Focus Electric, Hyundai Ioniq Electric, Kia Soul EV, Mahindra e20, Mercedes-Benz B-Class Electric Drive, Nissan ENV 205 and 7-seater Combi, Nissan Leaf, Peugeot Ion, Renault Fluence ZE, Renault Zoe, Smart 42 Electric Drive, Tesla Model S, Toyota Mirai, Volkswagen e-Golf, and Volkswagen e-Up. Eligible Category 2 Vehicles Audi A3 e-tron My 2016 only, BMW 225xe, BMW 330e, Kia Optima PHEV, Mercedes-Benz C350e, Mitsubishi Outlander PHEV except GX3 H4 work, Toyota Prius Plug-in Hybrid, Vauxhall Ampera, Volkswagen Golf GTE, Volkswagen Passat GTE, Volvo V60 Plug-in Hybrid, D5 and D6 Twin Engine, and Volvo Volvo XC90 T8 twin engine momentum. Ineligible vehicles category 2 or 3 vehicles with a recommended retail price over £60,000 aren't eligible for a grant. This includes BMW i8 category 2, Mercedes-Benz S500 plug-in hybrid category 3, and Porsche Panamera SE hybrid category 3. The Tesla Roadster was not included in the government's list of eligible vehicles for the plug-in electric car grant. Tesla Motors stated that the company applied for the scheme, but did not complete its application. In addition to the extension of the plug in grant, the government also announced it will continue the electric vehicle home charge scheme. Starting in March 2016 owners of ultra-low emission vehicles who install a dedicated charge point at their home, covering roughly half the average cost, will get GB £500 towards the cost of installing the charging point, rather than the previous GB £700 maximum. <laughs> Plug-in van grant The plug-in car grant began in February 2012. Van buyers can receive 20% up to GB £8,000 off the cost of a plug-in van. To be eligible for the scheme, vans have to meet performance criteria to ensure safety, range, and ultra-low tailpipe emissions. Consumers, both business and private will receive the discount at the point of purchase. The plug-in van grant scheme was extended in October 2016 to make electric trucks above 3.5 tons eligible for grants of up to GB £20,000, when businesses switch their large trucks to an electric vehicle. The government also announced their commitment for an additional GB £4 million to the scheme so that all vans and trucks meeting the eligibility requirements can benefit from the grant scheme. The extension of the plug-in van grant means that N2 vans 3.5 to 12 tons gross weight and N3 vans over 12 tons gross weight are now eligible. The eligibility criteria for vans with a gross weight of 3.5 tons or less N1 van are vehicle type only new N1 vans are eligible. This includes pre-registration conversions normal, internal combustion engine vans that were converted to battery or hybrid versions by specialist converters before the car's first registration. Carbon dioxide exhaust emissions – Vehicles must emit less than 75 grams of carbon dioxide CO2 per kilometer driven. Range – Eligible fully electric vans must be able to travel a minimum of 60 miles 97 kilometers between charges. Plug-in hybrid electric vehicles PHEVs, must have a minimum electric range of 10 miles 16 km. Minimum top speed – Vehicles must be able to reach a speed of 50 miles per hour, 80 km per hour or more. Warranty – Vehicles must have a 3-year or 60,000 miles 97,000 km vehicle warranty guarantee and a 3-year battery and electric drive train warranty, with the option of extending the battery warranty for an extra 2 years. Battery performance – Vehicles must have either a minimum 5-year warranty on the battery and electric drive train as standard or extra evidence of battery performance to show reasonable performance after 3 years of use. Electrical safety – Vehicles must comply with certain regulations UNECE Reg 100.00 that show that they are electrically safe. 
crash safety to make sure cars will be safe in a crash, they must either have EC whole vehicle type approval ECWVTA, not small series or evidence that the car has appropriate levels of safety as judged by international standards. As of December 2016, the number of claims made through the plug-in van grant scheme totaled 2,938 units since the launch of the program in 2012, up from 1,906 made by the end of December 2015. As of October 2016 the following nine vans are eligible for the grant, BD Automotive A-Traffic, BD Automotive Educato, Citroen Berlingo, Mercedes-Benz Vito E-Cell, Mitsubishi Outlander GX3H4 Work, Nissan ENV200, Peugeot ePartner, Renault Kangoo ZE, and Smith Electric Edison. Topic. Number of beneficiaries The number of eligible registered plug-in electric vehicles passed the 25,000-unit milestone in January 2015. As of March 2017, the number of eligible registered plug-in electric cars that have benefited with the subsidy totaled 94,541 units since the launch of the program in 2011. As of December 2016, the number of claims made through the plug-in van grant scheme totaled 2,938 units since the launch of the program in 2012. About 90,000 plug-in electric vehicles have been registered in the UK up until December 2016, including over 85,000 plug-in hybrids and all-electric cars, and about 4,000 plug-in commercial vans. Not all vehicles were eligible for the grant schemes. Topic. Plugged in places On 19 November 2009, Andrew Adonis, the Secretary of State for Transport, announced a scheme called, Plugged in Places, making available £30 million to be shared between three and six cities to investigate further the viability of providing power supply for electric vehicles, and encouraging local government and business to participate and bid for funds. The UK government is supporting the Plugged in Places program to install vehicle recharging points across the UK. The scheme offers match funding to consortia of businesses and public sector partners to support the installation of EV recharging infrastructure in lead places across the UK. There are eight plugged-in places, east of England, Greater Manchester, London, Midlands, Milton Keynes, North East, Northern Ireland, and Scotland. The government also published an infrastructure strategy in June 2011. Topic. London congestion charge All electric vehicles BEVs, and eligible plug-in hybrid electric vehicles PHEVs, qualify for a 100% discount from the London congestion charge. A plug-in electric drive vehicle qualifies if the vehicle is registered with the Driver and Vehicle Licensing Agency DVLA and has a fuel type of electric, or alternatively, if the vehicle is a plug-in hybrid and is on the government's list of PHEVs eligible for the OLEV grant. As of February 2015, approved PHEVs include all extended range cars such as the BMW i3 with range extender and Vauxhall Ampera, and plug-in hybrids that emit 75 grams per kilometer or less of CO2 and that meet the Euro 5 standard for air quality, such as the Audi A3 Sportback e-tron, BMW i8, Mitsubishi Outlander PHEV, and Toyota Prius plug-in hybrid. The original greener vehicle discount was substituted by the ultra-low emission discount ULED scheme that went into effect on 1 July 2013. The ULED introduced more stringent emission standards that limited the free access to the congestion charge zone to any car or van that emits 75 grams per kilometer or less of CO2 and meets the Euro 5 emission standards for air quality. As of July 2013 there are no internal combustion-only vehicles that meet this criteria. The measure is designed to limit the growing number of diesel vehicles on London's roads. Mayor Boris Johnson approved the new scheme in April 2013, after taking into account a number of comments received during the 12-week public consultation that took place. 
About 20,000 owners of vehicles registered for the Greener Vehicle Discount by June 2013 were granted a three-year sunset period until the 24th of June 2016 before they have to pay the full congestion charge. Effective from the 8th of April 2019, the ULED scheme will be replaced with the Cleaner Vehicle Discount. This means that from April 2019, only vehicles which are Euro 6, emit up to 75 grams per kilometre of CO2 and have a minimum 20 mile zero emission range, will qualify for the discount. A further phase from October 2021 will mean that only zero emission vehicles, pure electric vehicles and hydrogen fuel cell vehicles, will qualify for the discount, which will be phased out completely from December 2025. North America Topic Canada Topic Ontario Former rebate program the Ontario Ministry of Transportation MTO established the Electric Vehicle Incentive Program EVIP later renamed the Electric and Hydrogen Vehicle Incentive Program EHVIP in 2010 To qualify battery electric vehicles BEVs and plug-in hybrid electric vehicles PHEVs had to be purchased or leased from a seller in Ontario and owned or leased for at least 12 months Leased vehicles with 12-month terms received 33% of the incentive, 24-month lease terms received 66%, and lease terms 36 months or longer received the full incentive. Vehicles were required to be on a government-developed list of approved vehicles to qualify, and vehicles with a manufacturer's suggested retail price MSRP of $75,000 or greater were not eligible for the incentive. Electric vehicles with a battery size of 5 to 16 kilowatt hours were eligible for incentives from $6,000 to $10,000. Vehicles with a battery size exceeding 16 kilowatt hours qualified for $9,000 to $13,000. Vehicles with five or more seats were eligible for an additional $1,000. Demonstration vehicles under a specified mileage and used exclusively for test drives at dealerships or leasing companies were also eligible. Applications for incentives were required to be submitted within three months of the vehicle's provincial registration. Prior to the cancellation of the program, the Government of Ontario included rebates of up to $14,000 for electric and hybrid vehicles. The EHVIP was financed by proceeds from Ontario's participation with Quebec and California in the Western Climate Initiative WCI cap and trade program, the program and the companion incentive program to encourage private businesses to install charging stations was cancelled on July 11, 2018 after the government of Premier Doug Ford began the withdrawal of Ontario from the WCI. Rebates will still be issued for vehicles if either of the following conditions are met. The vehicle was delivered to the consumer, registered, and plated on or before July 11, or the vehicle is currently in the inventory of a dealership or was ordered from the manufacturer on or before July 11, provided that the vehicle is delivered to the consumer, registered, and plated by September 10. Green vehicle plates Electric vehicles in Ontario are eligible for special license plates, officially called green vehicle license plates, from the Ministry of Transportation. In addition to a green color scheme distinct from the province's typical blue and white license plates, these green plates permit BEV and PHEV owners to travel in the province's high-occupancy vehicle HOV and travel at no cost in the high-occupancy toll hot lanes, regardless of the number of passengers in the vehicle. Quebec Quebec began offering rebates of up to $8,000 $8, beginning on January 1, 2012, for the purchase of new plug-in electric vehicles equipped with a minimum of 4 kWh battery, and new hybrid electric vehicles were eligible for a $1,000 rebate. All electric vehicles with high-capacity battery packs were eligible for the full $8,000 rebate, and lower incentives were set for low-range electric cars and plug-in hybrids. 
Quebec's government earmarked $50 million $49.9 million for the program, and the maximum rebate amount was set to be slowly reduced every year until a maximum of $3,000 in 2015, but the rebates would continue until the fund runs out. There was also a ceiling for the maximum number of eligible vehicles, 10,000 for all electric vehicles and plug-in hybrids, and 5,000 for conventional hybrids. In November 2013, the provincial government announced its decision to earmark in 2014 an additional $65 million, tilde $45.5 million, to fund a three-year extension to the electric vehicle rebate program. The maximum rebate was kept at $8,000, but a graded scale was introduced in order to spread the incentive over 10,000 or more vehicles. Quebec's government also set the goal to deploy 12,500 more electric vehicles in the province by 2017, consisting of 10,200 consumer cars, 325 taxis, and 2,000 government fleet vehicles. Also, incentives were issued for greening. 525 taxis, aimed to introduce 325 plug-in vehicles, 275 plug-in hybrids and 50 all-electrics, and 200 conventional hybrids. The purchase incentives start at $20,000 for battery electric taxis, $12,000 for plug-in hybrids, and $3,000 for conventional hybrids, with the rebate declining over time. The province planned to also subsidize 125 Level 2 stations for the taxi industry, paying 75% of the cost up to $5,000, and pay for the majority of costs to fund 10 Level 3 charges for taxis. Also in 2013, the provincial government announced its support to deploy 5,000 new charging stations. A total of 500 stations were to be located around various cities and along the province's so-called electric circuit route, another 1,000 near government buildings, and 3,500 at various workplaces for employee use. Businesses are eligible for a 75% rebate on installation costs up to $5,000 for Level 1 or Level 2 charging stations. In addition, a 50% rebate will continue to be offered to individuals for installation of home charging stations, with a maximum of $1,000. Also the government announced an initiative for the gradual electrification of the provincial government's own vehicle fleet. The goal is to replace vehicles of the provincial government's 34 ministers cabinet-level officials with plug-in hybrid or pure electric vehicles by March 2017. The government expects to bring 2,000 plug in vehicles into the provincial fleet over the same time. In October 2016, the National Assembly of Quebec passed a new zero emission vehicle legislation that obliges any carmaker who sells in the Canadian province more than 4,500 new vehicles per year over a three year average to offer their customers a minimum number of plug in hybrid and all electric models. Under the new law, 3.5% of the total number of autos sold by carmakers in Quebec have to be zero emissions vehicles ZEV starting in 2018, rising to 15.5% in 2020. A tradable credit system was created for those carmakers not fulfilling their quotas to avoid financial penalties. The quotas will be determined by Quebec's Ministry of Sustainable Development. Quebec became the first Canadian province to pass such legislation, joining 10 U.S. states, including California, that have similar ZEV laws. Quebec aims to have 100,000 zero-emission vehicles on the road by 2020. Initially, the provincial government set the goal in 2011 to have 300,000 plug-in vehicles on the roads by 2020. British Columbia As of April 1, 2015, British Columbia's Clean Energy Vehicle CEV program, funded by the Government of British Columbia and administered by the new car dealers of British Columbia Industry Group, was renewed with funding for approximately 1250 to 1500 vehicles. This program will expire on March 31, 2020 or when the $6,355,000 in new funding is depleted. 
The current levels of incentives are $5,000 for an EV min .15 kWh capacity, $2,500 for a plug-in hybrid or an extended range vehicle with a smaller battery capacity, min 4 kWh capacity, and up to $6,000 for hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. These amounts may be reduced annually. All vehicles must be new and purchased in BC, each claim is processed by the dealer at the point of sale and deducted from the vehicle price. The previous program that provided funding to cover part of the cost of installing home EV charging equipment has been discontinued. There is also a separate provincially funded, Scrap It! program with incentives for scrapping model year 2000 or earlier, conventional gas-powered vehicles. Basic incentives range from bus passes to coupe car share membership credits, or $200 in cash. However, there is also the option of applying for a $3,000 rebate check plus $250 off the point of sale purchase price when buying a new or used EV min.15 kWh capacity. The Scrap It! Rebate program currently brings the combined provincial incentives available to buyers of a qualifying new EV in BC to $8,250. The Government of British Columbia had announced the LiveSmart BC program, which started offering rebates of up to $5,000 per eligible clean energy vehicle commencing on December 1, 2011. The incentives were available until March 31, 2013 or until available funding were depleted, whichever came first. Available funds were enough to provide incentives for approximately 1,370 vehicles. Battery electric vehicles, fuel cell vehicles and plug-in hybrids with battery capacity of 15.0 kWh and above are eligible for a $5,000 incentive. Also effective December 1, 2011, rebates of up to $500 per qualifying electric vehicle charging equipment were available to BC residents who had purchased a clean energy vehicle. As of February 14, 2014, the Point of Sale Incentive Program and Residential Electric Charging Station Program had depleted their budgets and were no longer accepting applications for rebates prior to the Point of Sale Incentive Program being refunded in April 2015. Since 2016, PHEV and BEV owners can apply for a special decal which permits access to high occupancy vehicle lanes regardless of the number of passengers in the vehicle. Topic. Mexico Mexico has set a minimum goal of clean energies as part of the electric power generation mix in for the next years 25% in 2018, 30% in 2021 and 35% in 2024 as a strategy to reach greenhouse gases GHG, emission cuts. Energy efficiency is also regarded as one of the greater cost-benefit potential alternatives to achieve GHG reduction. Moreover, the transport sector in Mexico represents 44.7% of the total final consumption of energy, almost 17% more than the world average 28%. Thus, replacing low fuel efficient transport with alternative fuels is regarded as a considerable contribution to reduce 50% of its GHG emissions by the year 2050, as established by the General Law on Climate Change Commitments. Therefore, incentives for PHEVs have been created both at regional and federal levels to decrease cost of ownership for the end consumers. Minimum fuel efficiency by vehicle class Topic. Federal In Mexico, there are several existing incentives regarding plug-in hybrid electric vehicles PHEV, at a federal level. Fiscal incentives for end consumers include higher daily lease tax deductions per car $285 versus $200 MXN, higher tax deduction caps per car $250,000 versus $175,000 MXN, and fiscal credits for up to 30% of investments for charging stations located in public places. 
Furthermore, PHEVs are exempt of the tax on new vehicles paid by the manufacturer, assembler or dealer. Also, the electrical power service contract for residential charging stations can be independent of household consumption under a commercial rate, which can save up to 40% on electricity compared to consolidating billing in the same meter. Topic: Regional In Mexico City, Mexico State and Jalisco, PHEVs are exempt from vehicular emission verification. They can instead obtain an exempt hologram which unbounds them from the restrictions imposed by the vehicular emission verification programs, which limits car usage. PHEVs are also exempt of the annual ownership vehicle tax in Baja California, Durango, Mexico City, Mexico State, Nayarit, Tlaxcala and Querétaro. In Mexico City, they also have right to a 50% discount on other contributions permits, concessions, registry, etc., and models from 2002 to 2017 pay only an endorsement right for vehicle control services. Finally, in Mexico City, PHEVs also have preferential parking in private and public parking lots. Charging station network As of January 2017, in Mexico there were 700 public access charging stations for PHEVs that are privately owned. The Ministry of Energy and the state-owned electric power utility, Comisión Federal de Electricidad, will destine $25 million MXN to install 100 more charging stations through 2017-2018 in the metropolitan areas of Guadalajara, Monterrey and Mexico City. As of now, users of the existing network can charge their PHEVs for free, as the cost of electricity is absorbed by the owners of the establishments where the charging stations are located. United States Federal government In his 2011 State of the Union address, President Barack Obama set the goal for the U.S. to become the first country to have one million electric vehicles on the road by 2015. For this purpose, his administration pledged $2.4 billion in federal grants to support the development of next-generation electric vehicles and batteries. The funds were allocated as follows, $1.5 billion in grants to U.S.-based manufacturers to produce highly efficient batteries and their components, up to $500 million in grants to U.S.-based manufacturers to produce other components needed for electric vehicles, such as electric motors and other components, and up to $400 million to demonstrate and evaluate plug-in hybrids and other electric infrastructure concepts like truck stop charging station, electric rail, and training for technicians to build and repair electric vehicles green -collar jobs, considering that actual plug-in car sales were lower than initially expected. As of early 2013, several industry observers have concluded that Obama's one million goal was unattainable. As of December 2016, approximately 542,000 EVs have been sold to date in the U.S. According to a July 2012 study by Pike Research, cumulative sales will reach the 1 million goal set by the Obama administration only in 2018, while other analysts agree that the goal could be achieved in 2018. With only about 400,000 plug-in electric cars sold in the United States by the end of December 2015, Secretary of Energy, Ernest Moniz, said in January 2016 that the 1 million goal may not be reached until 2020. According to the Secretary purchases have fallen well below President Barack Obama's goal due to low gasoline prices, which had a negative impact on sales. Also improvements in battery technology are required as lowering battery costs is absolutely critical to boost electric vehicle sales. U.S. cumulative plug-in sales since 2008 achieved the 500,000 unit milestone in August 2016. In March 2018, a group of America's largest electric utilities sided with U.S. automakers and asked Congress to preserve the tax credit in order to support the continued growth of sales of electric vehicles. Currently, there are hundreds of thousands of electric vehicles on the road. 
However, the auto industry is approaching a point at which the tax incentives will begin to expire. According to Daily Energy Insider, the utilities' efforts occur at a time when growth in electric sales is sluggish and electric companies see a possible opportunity to apply the latest battery technology to help serve their customers. <laughs> New plug-in electric vehicles the Energy Improvement and Extension Act of 2008 granted tax credits for new qualified plug-in electric drive motor vehicles. The American Recovery and Reinvestment Act of 2009 also authorized federal tax credits for converted plug-ins, though the credit is lower than for new PEVs. American Clean Energy and Security Act of 2009 also has extensive provisions for electric cars. The bill calls for all electric utilities to "...develop a plan to support the use of plug-in electric drive vehicles, including heavy-duty hybrid electric vehicles." The bill also provides for "...smart grid integration," allowing for more efficient, effective delivery of electricity to accommodate the additional demands of plug-in electric vehicles. Finally, the bill allows for the Department of Energy to fund projects that support the development of PEVs and smart grid technology and infrastructure. As defined by the 2009 ACES Act, a PEV is a vehicle which draws propulsion energy from a traction battery with at least 4 kWh of capacity and uses an offboard source of energy to recharge such battery. The tax credit for new plug-in electric vehicles is worth $2,500 plus $417 for each kilowatt-hour of battery capacity over 4 kWh, and the portion of the credit determined by battery capacity cannot exceed $5,000. Therefore, the maximum amount of the credit allowed for a new PEV is $7,500. Both the Nissan LEAF electric vehicle and the Chevrolet Volt plug-in hybrid, launched in December 2010, are eligible for the maximum $7,500 tax credit. The Toyota Prius plug-in hybrid, released in January 2012, is eligible for a $2,500 tax credit due to its smaller battery capacity of 5.2 kWh. All Tesla cars and Chevrolet Bolts are eligible for the $7,500 tax credit. As granted by the 2009 ACES Act, electric vehicles produced after 2010 are eligible for an IRS tax credit from $2,500 to $7,500. There are some limitations and rules however that go along with the applied tax credit from electric vehicles. When an electric vehicle is leased, the tax credit is held by the manufacturer offering the lease, not by the lessee. Other restrictions that affect PEV tax credit include limitation of credit for electric vehicles used in reselling purposes, terms requiring the vehicle to remain in the United States, and production by qualified sellers. Phase out These granted tax credits on PEV vehicles will phase out once 200,000 plug-in vehicles are sold in the U.S. during this phase-out period after 200,000 plug-in car sales. Qualified producers will experience a drop in a tax credit of $7,500 to $3,750 for the next six months followed by a drop to $1,875 for another six months until the credit is ran out completely. The qualified plug-in electric vehicle credit phases out for a PEV manufacturer over the one-year period beginning with the second calendar quarter after the calendar quarter in which at least 200,000 qualifying vehicles from that manufacturer have been sold for use in the U.S. Cumulative sales started counting sales after December 31, 2009. After reaching the cap, qualifying PEVs for one quarter still earn the full credit. The second quarter after that quarter, PEVs are eligible for 50% of the credit for six months, then 25% of the credit for another six months, and finally the credit is phased out. In July 2018, Tesla Inc. was the first plug in manufacturer to pass 200,000 sales, and the full tax credit will be available until the end 2018, with the phase out beginning in January 2019. General Motors combined sales of plug-in electric vehicles passed 200,000 units in November 2018. 
The full tax credit will be available until the end of March 2019 and thereafter reduces gradually until it is completely phase out beginning on April 1, 2020. Studies A 2013 study published in the journal Energy Policy determined that current federal subsidies are not aligned with the goal of decreased gasoline consumption in a consistent and efficient manner. In particular, hybrid vehicle credit is given according to battery capacity rather than on the vehicle's all-electric range. Across the battery capacity and charging infrastructure scenarios examined, the lowest cost solution is for more drivers to switch to traditional hybrid electrics or low-capacity plug-in hybrid electric vehicles PHEVs. Installing charging infrastructure would provide lower gasoline savings per dollar spent than paying for increased PHEV battery capacity. A 2016 study conducted by researchers from the University of California, Davis found that the federal tax credit was the reason behind more than 30% of the plug in electric sales. The impact of the federal tax incentive is higher among owners of the Nissan Leaf, with up to 49% of sales attributable to the federal incentive. The study, based on a stated preference survey of more than 2,882 plug-in vehicle owners in 11 states, also found that the federal tax credit shifts buyers from internal combustion engine vehicles to plug-in vehicles and advances the purchase timing of new vehicles by a year or more. <laughs> plug-in conversion kits the 2009 ARA provided a tax credit for plug-in electric drive conversion kits. The credit is equal to 10% of the cost of converting a vehicle to a qualified plug-in electric vehicle and in service after February 17, 2009. The maximum amount of the credit is $4,000. The credit does not apply to conversions made after December 31, 2011. Topic. Charging equipment Through 2010, there was a federal tax credit equal to 50% of the cost to buy and install a home-based charging station with a maximum credit of $2,000 for each station. Businesses qualified for tax credits up to $50,000 for larger installations. These credits expired on December 31, 2010, but were extended through 2013 with a reduced tax credit equal to 30% with a maximum credit of up to $1,000 for each station for individuals and up to $30,000 for commercial buyers. <laughs> New proposals Two separate initiatives were pursued in 2011 to transform the tax credit into an instant cash rebate, these did not pass. The objective of both initiatives was to make new qualifying plug-in electric cars more accessible to buyers by making the incentive more effective. The rebate would have been available at the point of sale allowing consumers to avoid a wait of up to a year to apply the tax credit against income tax returns. The first initiative was from Senator Debbie Stabenow who reintroduced the Charging America Forward Act. This bill was introduced in August 2010 but was not voted by the full Senate. The bill would have turned the tax credit into a rebate worth up to $7,500 for plug-in electric vehicles and also would have provided businesses with a tax credit for purchasing medium or heavy-duty plug-in hybrid trucks. The other initiative was from the Obama administration and was submitted in the FY2012 budget as a provision to transform the existing credit into a rebate that would have been claimable by dealers and passed along to the consumers. This was not included in the budget. Another change plug in tax credit was proposed by Senator Carl Levin and Representative Sander Levin, who proposed to raise the existing cap on the number of plug in vehicles eligible for the tax credit. The proposal would have raised that limit from the existing 200,000 PEVs per manufacturer to 500,000 units. This was not passed. In March 2014, the Obama administration included a provision in the FY2015 budget to increase the maximum tax credit for plug in electric vehicles and other advanced vehicles to $10,000. However, the new maximum tax credit would not apply to luxury vehicles with a sales price of over $45,000, which would be capped at $7,500. 
The proposal sought to remove the 200,000 vehicle cap per manufacturer after which the credit phases out over a year. Instead, the incentives would begin to phase out, falling to 75% of the current credit, starting in 2019 for all manufacturers, and would be completely phased out by 2022. This did not get included in the budget. In November 2017, House Republicans proposed scrapping the $7,500 tax credit as part of a sweeping tax overhaul, but the final bill passed left the credit intact. In California The Clean Vehicle Rebate Project CVRP, initially funded with a total of $4.1 million by the California Environmental Protection Agency's Air Resources Board was established in order to promote the production and use of zero-emission vehicles ZEVs, including plug-in electric and fuel cell vehicles. The program was created from Assembly Bill 118 that was signed by Governor Schwarzenegger in October 2007. The funding is provided on a first-come, first-served basis, and the project is expected to go through 2015. Eligible vehicles include only new ARB certified or approved zero-emission or plug-in hybrid electric vehicles. A list of eligible vehicles can be found on the California Center for Sustainable Energy website. Among the eligible vehicles are neighborhood electric vehicles, battery electric, plug-in hybrid electric, and fuel cell vehicles including cars, trucks, medium and heavy-duty commercial vehicles, and zero-emission motorcycles. Vehicles must be purchased or leased on or after March 15, 2010. Rebates of up to $5,000 per light-duty vehicle are available for individuals and business owners who purchase or lease new eligible vehicles. Certain zero-emission commercial vehicles are also eligible for rebates up to $20,000. As of early September 2012, private individuals accounted for 88% of rebate funds reimbursed. As of early March 2013, CARB has issued about 18,000 rebates totaling $41 million. However, CARB notices that approximately 2,300 Chevrolet Volts were sold in California before the Volt became eligible for the rebate in February 2012. As a result of the rebate and other existing incentives, such as allowing solo drivers in HOV lanes, California is the leading PEV market in the United States with about 40% of all new plug-in electric vehicles sold nationwide during 2011 and 2012, while the state represents about 10% of all new car sales in the country. As of the 10th of March 2014, a total of 52,264 clean vehicle rebates have been issued by the CV for a total of $110,222,866 dispersed, with only $3.8 million remaining for fiscal year 2013-2014. As of April 2014, the CVRP was facing an estimated $30 million funding shortfall for the 2013-14 fiscal year, and uncertainty about additional funding for the 2014-15 fiscal year. CARB staff presented a proposal to the board to overcome the funding shortage and also to facilitate the rebates to benefit buyers in disadvantaged communities who live in areas with bad air quality or who can't afford high end electric cars. A bill signed into law in September 2014 mandated the CARB to draft a financial plan to meet California's goal of putting 1 million vehicles on the road while making sure that disadvantaged communities can participate. CARB had to change the Clean Vehicle Rebate Program to provide an extra credit for low-income drivers who wish to purchase or lease an electric car. CARB also provides assistance to carsharing programs in low-income neighborhoods and install charging stations in apartment buildings in those communities. Under Bill SB 1275, low-income residents who agree to scrap older, polluting cars will also get a clean vehicle rebate on top of existing payments for junking smog-producing vehicles. Another bill signed into law in September 2014, AB 1721, grants clean air vehicles free or reduced rates in high-occupancy toll lanes, hot lanes. 
AB 2565 facilitates access to charging stations by requiring commercial and residential property owners to approve installation if the charging station meets requirements and complies with the owner's process for approving a modification to the property. As of 29 March 2016, California added income-based caps to its rebate system. Buyers with incomes less than 300% of the federal poverty level will get up to $3,000 for a plug-in hybrid, $4,000 for an all-electric car, and $6,500 for a hydrogen fuel cell car and the rebate scales down until Californian buyers with incomes over $250,000 are no longer eligible for incentives on hybrids or electric cars, however can get $5,000 for a hydrogen fuel cell car. As of March 2016, the Center for Sustainable Energy has issued more than $291 million in the CVRP for over 137,200 vehicles since 2010. The income base caps went into effect on the 1st of November 2016. Residents will not be eligible for rebates if their gross annual income exceeds $150,000 for single tax filers, $204,000 for head of household filers and $300,000 for joint filers. These limits do not apply to the purchase of fuel cell electric vehicles, which represent less than 1% of rebate applications. The standard tax credits on eligible cars are $1,500 for plug-in hybrids, $2,500 for all electrics, and $5,000 for fuel cell cars. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Access to HOV lanes. In California a vehicle that meets specified emissions standards may be issued Clean Air Vehicle CAV decals that allow the vehicle to be operated by a single occupant in California's High Occupancy Vehicle Lanes HOV, or Carpool or Diamond Lanes. All electric vehicles are classified as Federal Inherently Low Emission Vehicles ILEVs, and as Zero Emissions Vehicles are entitled to an unlimited number of white CAV stickers. Green CAV stickers were initially available to a limited number of applicants that purchased or leased cars meeting California's Enhanced Advanced Technology Partial Zero Emission Vehicle enhanced at PZEV or Transitional Zero Emission Vehicle TZEV requirements, for which plug-in hybrids classify. The green car sticker cap was increased several times, and since September 2016 the cap was removed. Research performed in 2015 by the UCLA Luskin Center for Innovation found that access to HOV lanes has a significant impact on plug in car sales. Researchers linked automobile sales to a sample of more than 7,000 of the 8,057 census tracts in California for the study, including Los Angeles, Sacramento, San Diego and San Francisco. The study concluded that the ability to use potentially time-saving HOV lanes prompted the purchase of more than 24,000 plug-in electric cars and hybrids in the four urban areas from 2010 to 2013, or about 40% of the total of such vehicles. The UCLA researcher concluded that without the policy giving plug-in vehicles access to HOV lanes, total plug-in sales in the same study areas would have been only 36,692 for the three-year period. All states As of November 2014, 37 states and Washington, D.C. have established incentives and tax exemptions for BEVs and PHEVs, or utility rate breaks, and other non-monetary incentives such as free parking and high-occupancy vehicle lane access. All states are eligible for the $7,500 income tax credit. Australia. Topic: Federal incentives. In Australia, the federal government offers no direct incentives for electric vehicle ownership and imposes a substantial financial disincentive by way of a federal luxury car tax that is applied on new vehicles valued over a certain threshold. In 2014-15, this was $61,884. 
The application threshold for this tax is increased to $75,375 for fuel-efficient vehicles, defined as those with a fuel consumption rating under 7 liters per 100 km. By definition, electric vehicles which do not use conventional fuel sources are covered by this classification. Topic: <laughs> State and Territory Incentives. Motor vehicle registrations in Australia are the responsibility of the state and territory governments. Two of these jurisdictions offer incentives or rebates for electric vehicles. Topic: Victoria. In Victoria, hybrid and electric vehicles received a $100 annual discount on vehicle registration. Topic: Australian Capital Territory. In the Australian Capital Territory, stamp duty on motor vehicle purchases is reduced for lower emission vehicles. For electric vehicles with zero tailpipe emissions, the stamp duty is $0. Electric powered vehicles are entitled to 20% discount on registration. The owner pays 20% less on the cost of the annual registration component, however, must pay the full fee for compulsory third party insurance, road rescue fee, road safety contribution. There are no electric vehicle incentives in New South Wales, Queensland, South Australia, Western Australia, Tasmania, or the Northern Territory. Africa Topic: Morocco. Electric and hybrid vehicles are exempt from customs duties since 2017. Topic: See also. Electric car use by country. Government incentives for fuel-efficient vehicles in the United States. Hybrid tax credit List of modern production plug-in electric vehicles Plug-in America <laughs>